that one. You may be seated. Oh, okay. Officers, yeah. We as members of the Intermediate Burial Detail of San Quentin are here assembled to pay our final tribute of respect to our fallen comrades. When the call of our country was heard, Ron Wells answered. Self was forgotten in the cause of the greater good. As a brave man, he marched away with an abiding faith in his God, his country, and his flag. The red of our country's flag was made redder still by his heroism. The white was stainlessly pure by the motives which impelled him. And in the starry field of our nation's glorious banner, the blue has been glorified by the service he rendered to the American ideal. Officers, pray dress, chaplain, let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, Father of all, in this these monuments of the dead we see thy hand. In the depth of our soul, we realize the truth of the inspired words and the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. As comrade after comrade depart, we march on as our ranks grow thinner. Help us to be faithful unto thee and to one another. We beseech thee. Look with mercy upon all of us here assembled, and with thy own tenderness, console and comfort those who are by the hand of death. Give them the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for their spirit of heaviness. Heavenly Father, bless our country with freedom, peace, and righteousness. And through thy sovereign and Holy Spirit's favor, may we all meet at last before thy throne of grace in heaven. To the great name shall be praised forever and ever. Amen. 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 As years go by, we are called upon to perform these sad duties of respect for our comrades as they depart one by one. Officers, ten, you will now perform the duties of your station. On behalf of all the veterans of the United States, I present this tribute as a symbol of our undying respect for our fallen comrades.
I place this symbol of purity near these remains that all future generations may emulate his unselfish devotion to duty, even to the last of his comrades. I place this last token of affection from his comrades in arms and the remains of our departed comrade and crown his mortal remains with this symbol of victory. And now, please prepare yourself for three rifle bows. If there are children present, you may wish to console them or cover their ears to protect them from the loud report of the rifles. Then, please join us in a final salute to Ron by placing your right hand over your heart and holding it there while caps is silent. Sergeant at Arms, prepare to salute our fallen comrades. Reason. This banner of love and devotion now being folded is a living memorial to the courageous thoughts of our comrades the one you came here to honor this day. The blue field represents the sky, which overlooks our land and denotes the watchfulness of God the eternal. The red stripes tell us of the white stripes, the red stripes tell us of blood, sweat, and tears often conquered by our comrades devotion to the responsible freedoms of this country. The white stripes fully proclaim those freedoms he helped secure for future generations. This is his flag. This is our spiritual heritage. Receive it with the tears of our minds and the faith of our hearts.
on behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. These, these are the remains of our final salute to our fallen comrade. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guide, comfort, and console you in your time of sorrow. You have the condolences of the burial detail. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the military honor. Officer, left base, right dismissed. Right, left base. I have a plaque from family, I'll read from that plaque. Whoa, On behalf of the Great to America, America and the Patriot Guard writers, please accept our sincere condolences on the loss of your loved one. May your pain be tempered by the knowledge that Ronald L. Welch, United States Army, is a true American hero. I serve as one of the pastors at Springfield First United Methodist Church, and it is my honor to be here with you today. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Ronald Lee. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, speak to our hearts your words of comfort. Bring us hope now when we need it most. Give to us your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now, in this moment of quietness and peace, we remember our loved one and pray, O oh God, that you will meet us in this place. <laughs> Amen. Ronald Lee Wells was born on August 12, 1950 in Springfield, Illinois to Carol and Belva Wells. He arrived with his twin brother, Donald, and they were welcomed by their older brother, Robert. These three were known as Ronnie, Donnie, and Bobby growing up. Ron was born into a farm family 
And that meant he grew up with those traditional values, morals, and beliefs. He was taught to work hard and to be grateful for what he had. And his parents taught him to not give up hope. Ronnie was also born into a proud military family. His father served in the Navy, Bobby served in the Navy as well, and Ronnie and Donnie served in the Army. They both served in Korea from 1970 to 1972 in the 2nd Infantry. Serving in the military reinforced attributes they learned as kids, the importance of discipline and a strong work ethic. It was a, an enforcement of the sense of we instead of me. And that's probably why Ron was the kind of guy that would do anything for you. He was always willing to lend a helping hand, and if you needed help moving, Ron was your guy. He was the kind of guy that stepped up when others needed help. Ron was a family man. He loved his boys, Joe and Jason, very much. He made sure they had all sorts of great experiences growing up, lots of camping trips and motorcycle trips. They would go canoeing and fishing. And if his kids needed anything, Ronnie would do it for them. Joe shared a story about when he was a kid. They didn't always have much, but Ron always worked hard to make sure that they never went hungry and they had what they needed. One Christmas, there was just a couple of gifts, a soccer ball and a toy toolbox. At the time, Joe was a little disappointed, but as he looks back now, he can see the incredible sacrifice that his dad went through for him and his brother. That was the kind of guy Ron was. And he always had time to give to his kids, always. He worked at Dickey John for many years, working on circuit boards and other electronics. He then went on to work at Fancy Creek Landscaping, where he worked on everything from retaining walls to patios to plants. At one point, he also worked with his brother at an auto body shop in Chatham. He loved working on cars and that eventually turned into a love of motorcycles. Every year, he uh, would disassemble his bike, sand it down, and repaint it a new co color. He just loved to do that kind of stuff. And he had quite a green thumb. He earned a certificate from the Horticulture Society and was a member of the Bonsai Society. He loved to work on stained glass. He would make windows, but he'd also make stained glass bricks and stained glass bench seats. He loved beef jerky and Korean food. In particular, he loved kimbap and kimchi. I'm told that he would get gallon jars of kimchi and just eat it straight from the jar. That's, that's, that's something right there. He also loved a good ribeye steak. Ronald was quite the guy, was loved by so many. He was a wonderful man, generous with his time and energy. He loved to help people and he particularly loved his family, especially his boys. He will be greatly missed by his friends and family, but he will live on in the memories of those who loved him. I'd like to share a passage of scripture from John 14. And in this scripture, Jesus has just told the disciples that he's leaving them. And of course, the disciples don't understand why, and they ask all those questions of, can't we go with you, and how will we know where you're going, and, and this is how Jesus responds. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture. Why? Because Jesus makes us these ultimate promises. 
He promises to prepare a place for us after we die, a place for us to live. He promises to come and show us the way to the place that he has prepared for us. And he promises to send us the Holy Spirit to be with us until that time comes. In other words, he's got it covered. Everything is under control. And as a person who likes to plan, I find great comfort in that, that there's nothing to worry about. Everything is ready and waiting. And so it was for Ron that when his time came and he passed from this world and into the next, Jesus met him and guided him to the place where he will live for all of eternity. He is residing in that place that Jesus promised to prepare for him. And he is enjoying the great company of those saints who have gone before him, his friends and his family. And he is with Jesus, whole and perfect, no longer shackled to a failing body, and I can only imagine the joy he is experiencing in this very moment. While it is comforting for those of us left behind to know that Ron is in the presence of Jesus, we cannot help but mourn his loss, for he will be greatly missed and has left a hole in the lives of those who loved him. But for those who mourn, Jesus has encouraging words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus tells us we don't need to worry about what has happened to our loved one or what will happen to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says. For he has made us promises that he will certainly keep. In the meantime, as we are working through this period of mourning, we know that we have been sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us peace and comfort when we need it most. I like to believe that Holy Spirit works in our lives well after the loss of a loved one. Maybe you've had that moment when after you've lost somebody, their memory just comes to your mind out of the blue and it brings a smile to your face and it warms your heart. I believe that it is the Holy Spirit reminding us of the hope we have to be reunited with our loved one again someday. Those memories remind us we do have hope that our loved one is waiting to be reunited with us, and someday we will all live together in a glorious, eternal home. Jesus tells us to let not our hearts be troubled, to believe in the Father, believe in the Son. We know the reality that awaits each of us, that moment when we too will be ushered from this life into the next, and there we will be reunited with our loved ones and live together as children of God. We know that Ron is with the Lord. Our hearts need not be troubled. Let us pray. Almighty God, all that you have given us is yours. As you first gave Ronald to us, we now give him back to you. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Ronald. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Ronald into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of light. As now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude today's service here at Camp Butler National Cemetery. On behalf of the director and the rest of the staff, I would like to offer our condolences to your family. In a few moments, we're going to take your loved one to his final resting place in section U as in uniform, which is going to be across my left shoulder on the west end of the cemetery grounds. 
we would like to see him later today, we do ask that you give us three hours after the service so that the site is prepared for your safety. As you make your way back to your vehicles, if you have any other questions for me, please feel free to ask. It's been my honor to be here with you today. Thank you. And on behalf of Stop Funeral Home, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here today. This will now conclude our services here at Camp Butler, and you may now return to your vehicles. Thank you. Before you gentlemen leave, I wanted to come out here and uh, thank you guys. A lot of fun to know. Fist bump? Fist bump. bump? All, All right. right. Y'all want to can't get in the park. It's our honor to really do these. Sir. Oh, we, we definitely enjoy it. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's an honor to be here. Fist bump? Bruce? Once again, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you. I'm you, sorry sir. for our, your loss. Well, thank that you for coming out. How you doing, buddy? Fist bump? You know. 
You got it. Double fist bump. You're gonna do both of them. <laughs> yes. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Wow. Wow. Say bye bye, baby. Fist bump. You wanna give him fist bump? Okay. All right. You guys have a safe trip. You too. Come, babe. Come on. 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 Come baby. Right here. Right here. Come on. If there was anything else you ever needed, don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay. Now, I know that there was a, um, a barrel certificate that they were looking for. Um, now, somehow I had forgotten to bring out the uh, cremation certificate. So I don't know if that is something that I need to swing by there a little later or not. That would be a good question for Andrea. Okay. Let's, let's check with her real quick. No. Okay. Did did you guys need a copy? Because I guess we were looking and they were asking over at Stobbs if uh, I required a certificate of burial. And I didn't see one. I got it. That's that's what copy you. Of the death certificate. That'll be just fine. Okay. Will that be That'll sufficient? Yeah. Okay. okay good. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Thank we you got you much. covered. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not coming to Jamie. Did you tell him I'm not home? We will. Yeah, I don't have my phone number. Yes, I got it. Let's cut it. Take care of yourself. Where do you live? Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. North Carolina. Oh, I thought you were still in Virginia. No, no, no. I went down there. I know you went to Florida. Yeah. Did you go to Florida? When I when I retired, I was down there for a while, and when I right. re retired up in Virginia Beach, you know, I was working with uh, special operations. Mm -hmm. I came down to Fort Bragg, I was working there, and then you know I was going to Afghanistan all the time, and you know the little one came along. I'm like, I can't go anymore. <laughs> so you know, I'm working there um, out of the college doing IT stuff. I'm an IT manager out there, so. You know, that way I'm home every night, every weekend. So, Safely. Yeah. Yeah, we can just sit up here. I have to so they can start the room. I got an idea. Take okay. care of you, safe home. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for coming. It was great. I did. I think we should like someone take a picture of my hands on the Okay. Well, they're getting ready to take it. You know what I mean? They took it. They took it. Wow. That was fast. Man, that was fast. Oh, don't make me use my Chicago <laughs> hospitality. Wow. Man, man, man. <laughs> we'll see you guys at Goy Dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 11 16, Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to there's, remember. There's not that much construction over there. Oh, that's good. Right, so. Oh, that's good. So we're going to do something else for me so it doesn't take away. I try to record too from my phone. So. Love you, Uncle Don. Uncle, you should wait here. I'm going to shut it off. I wonder how long that bye bye. from your pocket. 